Professor Dave and Chegg here. So far we have looked at galvanic cells, always under standard conditions. But we must sometimes perform calculations under non-standard conditions, namely with non-standard concentrations. So let's look at how we can do this. Under standard conditions, all the concentrations in the cell are one molar. Take, for example, this cell with copper and cerium, for example. Under standard conditions, it has a cell potential of 1.36 volts. But what if the cerium 4 plus concentration is greater than one molar? Well, let's recall what we know about Le Chatelier's principle. If we increase the concentration of a reactant, that will push things in the forward direction to use up the excess reactant. As a result, the cell potential must increase. Conversely, if we increase the concentration of one of the products, things will shift in the reverse direction, so the cell potential must decrease. We can take advantage of this phenomenon to construct something called a concentration cell. This is where both of the half reactions in the cell are utilizing the same substance, and therefore the same half reaction. But they are at different concentrations. For example, take the reduction of silver 1 to yield neutral silver. If a cell was constructed with this half reaction occurring in both half cells, and the concentrations were equal, the cell potential would be zero. But what if we have concentrations of 1 molar and 0.1 molar? Now the cells are not identical, and there will be a positive voltage. The cell will spontaneously attempt to equalize the concentrations by driving the reaction in the less concentrated half cell, so that electrons will neutralize the excess silver ions in the more concentrated half cell and bring the silver ion concentrations closer to being equal. We can describe concentration cells using the Nernst equation. To derive this, we will start with a familiar equation relating free energy change, standard free energy change, and reaction quotient. We know that these delta G terms can be expressed as negative N times F times cell potential, so let's make that replacement for each term. Then let's divide both sides by negative NF, and we get the Nernst equation. We will often use a simplified version of this at room temperature, and which uses a base 10 log instead of a natural log. Let's apply this to an example, where aluminum metal and manganese 2 plus produce aluminum 3 plus and manganese metal. This has a standard cell potential of 0.48 volts. But what if the manganese ion and aluminum ion concentrations are 0.5 molar and 1.5 molar respectively? To find the cell potential, we simply use the Nernst equation. First, let's calculate Q. Aluminum ions are the product, so that will go up top, over the manganese ions. Let's plug the concentrations in, making sure to raise them to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients, and we get 18 for Q. Then we need the moles of electrons. The half reactions involve a transfer of 6 electrons, so N will be 6. So we plug in the standard cell potential, the moles of electrons, and the reaction quotient, and we get 0.47 volts as our answer, just a hair less than the standard cell potential, which makes sense given that we have a slight excess of one of the products. So Le Chatelier's principle predicts a decreased cell potential given the diminished forward reaction. So we now understand how non-standard conditions affect cell potential. We also should be able to calculate non-standard cell potentials for a concentration cell using the Nernst equation. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.